Welcome back to Face, Richard. Good morning. Can you hear me? Can hear you fine. Perfect. How, How are you? Now? You healthy? I am now. Yes, I am. All right. Now. Good. I had a bit of a, a sickness back in February, actually, which I didn't get tested, but the the uh, symptoms were very, very similar to uh, COVID nineteen. The the temperature and the dry cough. So, um, did you lose your smell? I no, I didn't lose my taste or sense of smell, um, but I was bedridden for a good three or four days. Couldn't get out of bed, and I was um, not in a good way. I, I, I was messaging friends and my, telling my wife I've not been this sick in about twenty years. You know, since I was a kid with a really bad flu. So who knows? I I, I don't yeah. know whether I had it or not, but it wasn't pleasant. But yeah. I'm okay now. I'm all good. Good man. All right, so. Then you have enough strength to share your screen today? Absolutely, yeah. All right, it's that little green box on the drop-down menu. Okay, there we go. Corona, Corona. Fear how, that how I'll you own you. Over there? Everybody healthy? Yeah, you know, uh, so far, so good. I always feel like I have the flu. <laughs> so I think they call it... <laughs> <laughs> they, the call huh? <laughs> they call it old age. They call it old age. They call it, you know, the trading. Uh, I used to call it the commodity flu. I, I know a really funny guy that was like uh, close to your age, close to your age, actually. Um, uh, when he said it, we, which he said, you know, it, when you're above fifty and you wake up in the morning and nothing hurts, yeah, that probably means you're dead. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I was wondering. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, I must be in hell. Cause, Are you uh, um, so, practicing social distancing over there? Um, yeah, I am. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm doing my best to do it. It, it doesn't really make sense, uh, social distancing. And then you go to the grocery store. I haven't. I've been ordering my groceries. But then you have people standing right next to each other and getting in lines. Uh, it's really confusing here in the U.S. But, you know, in the meantime... Um, I do recall the last interview that we we had, and uh, you know there were a couple of bullseyes that you had, Richard. You know, lower uh, euro was what the option market was telling you. So, you know, what's on the docket here? What are we um, looking? Well, at? we can carry on where we left off. We okay. discussed. Um, you can see my screen. Yeah. Okay, you can see Got Australian it. dollar, US dollar monthly. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah, as you recall, we spoke in October. 2019, uh, beginning of Q4, and I had everything was great. We had no COVID. We had yeah. everybody was a bull. The yeah. stock market was flying high. Yeah. Everybody thought the Dow was going to 30,000. Um, so it was a very risk on. Um, sorry, risk. Yeah, yeah, risk on environment. Yeah. You know. So right. Essentially, I was bullish. Uh, Aussie US dollar and had a target of or an initial target of 70 which it struck in um, yeah I remember that call. just before That's Christmas right. actually I'll close that trade yeah okay um, how things have changed since yeah so looking at the monthly Australian dollar US dollar obviously we've had uh, you know a volatile um, Q1 the most volatile quarter since the 80s i believe is that right uh i i'd say maybe well, since perhaps the even 20s ever, 20s, think, ever yeah i think it's ever so it's been so I, i'm normally a bit of a position trader swing trader um but i have to confess over the last you know the months i've been day trading because the opportunity's been there and what do you um, drill what time frame are you drilling down to to day trade 15 minutes 10 mm -hmm. yeah so i'll start with um i i, I start with a, a bias on the on the daily i'll look mm -hmm. up, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you exactly how it goes so i'll look for a bias on the daily what i like to see is where price is relative to if i just show you i'll go on the daily okay so where price is relative to these um you can see there's two dot and MAs there the yeah. five EMA and the eight MA. What I like yeah. to see is where, where price is relative to those MAs. If it's below, I'm generally bearish. Uh, this is obviously day trading. And then right. um, on a 
uh, if it's if it's trading above, then I'm generally looking for long trades, and then I'll just I'll just drill it down on the four hour. I like to see the similar situation. I like to see a close below the orange one, which is a 14 EMA, so two weeks. Yeah, and then I'll just look for an alignment on the one hour 30, and the and the 10 is essentially what I enter in on. Um, you know, looking for just to pick up maybe 30 pips, 40, 50 pips, something like that, and something that I've been doing over the last few weeks but it's, it's definitely something that I it's, it's mentally exhausting I mean are you, you're a day trader are you, are you a day trader Dale? uh yeah sometimes I scalp yeah, yeah. you're right it's a young man's game I'm not young <laughs> I'm not. that's why that's what I mean it's, yeah you it's, know, um, it's it's intense it, 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 it will actually one of one of my um one of my you know he's a friend but he's also like someone that I mentored he he's he's come through the swing trading and he's done very well and he's on like seven or eight months consistency on swing trading. And then he's been, you know, really eager to get into day trading. So he's been day trading. We've been chatting in the room and he's, he's, you know, he's had one of his best, I think he had his best single day return last Monday. I won't tell you the figure, but he had a great day and he was like, this is fantastic. You know, I want to be a day trader. I don't want to go back to work because he's on in the UK. There's, there's an offer where you can be on what's called furloughed leave, which is essentially, you're off work, but you get paid 80%. Yeah. So he's doing that in his day trading at the minute. He had, his, uh-huh. he had his best day on a Monday, and then he'd give it all back on the Tuesday. And he went, this is insane. This is, this is exhausting. I said, I told you, it's, it really is. Um, you have to be very careful and keep your, your risk intact and your, sci- your psychology intact as well. Because I think what he done, he started day trading and had such a confidence from the Monday. He's gone overconfident on the Tuesday. And then he's uh, lost maybe a couple of percent. And then he's just revenge trade and and lost a bit more and and give it all back. And essentially, you know, that's why I think so many, without going off on too much of a tangent, I think that's why too too many newer traders, they want that excitement. They want a day trade. And then they they really, they realize quite quickly that it's a very, very difficult game is day trading. And so uh, they go full circle, they either quit or they revert to swing trading and then they'll get their consistency up swing trading and then then revert back to the day trading. So yeah. I would um, I'd trade my best day for this not happening in the world. You would sorry, say can you repeat I'd, that? I'd I'd give up my best day best trading day of the year for this not to be happening in the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's um it's yeah, it's it's not a good situation. And 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 I don't know if it makes it you know, if there is some silver lining in this great big cloud over the world is that we're kind of all in it together and we've all got to get out of it together. And I think that's, um, that's, uh, you know, the solidarity and the focus that that's, that's required to be honest with you. But, um, the world keeps on spinning and we will all keep improving and that's all we can do. Well, well. you know, I don't know. I don't really think that's human nature. I think the grocery stores, uh, say it all. It's, uh, you know, me, 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 and my stockpile, and I don't care if there's anything left for anyone else. So uh, anyway, Lord of the Flies time, buddy. Uh, so tell me, uh, tell me what you're thinking here with uh, with Aussie okay, so and, and risk off and. Well, what I'm thinking, I am. You know, everything's been flipped, hasn't it? Um, we've yeah. The, the cycle, the general macro business cycle, is already. Even even last year, you know, the Australian economy was not looking great last summer. Um, before this, yeah. Before this, everything was already, as, as far as I'm concerned, the fundamental data um, out of Australia was, was already turning and the, you know, the corona COVID-19 was just the catalyst. So Australian dollar, US dollar, I'll tell you what, I, essentially I'm, I'm just bullish US dollars. Um, and then coupled with that, we've got the weaker currencies, which I'm looking to uh, short. I'm already currently short in uh, Aussie US dollar from yesterday, but that's just a, a, a essentially like a short swing trade. And then I'll look for uh, a, possibly a better retracement, depending on how the um, you know the risk off risk on sentiment continues through this first few days of the month and the quarter. Um, so I'm looking at Australian dollar, US dollar, Euro, US dollar, and Great British pounds, uh, US dollar, um, long dollars. You think short Euro, Euro uh, we're going to head towards parity? 
Do you have any uh, targets? Absolutely. If I just like pull that? it up, yeah. Um, that's that's. So there is the long term chart of Euro USD. Um, parity is certainly on the cards. I can see um, we've got the turquoise one is the fifty MA. Um, mm -hmm. We've had this mat, this Doji uh, monthly, this insa insanely volatile month. Um, we're heading down, and you know you can see that it's certainly going to come down and test. You know where the, where the the problem is this with these currencies. It's a race to the bottom, isn't it? Every central bank is just easing. It's just a race to the bottom, and then you're left with okay. So what is the flight to quality? And it's just a you know your your best bet on the on the worst outcome for. That's the a hell of a trend line that we're trying to hold. That's, that goes yeah, back well, to 1980, back to 1980. 85 wow yeah and if yeah. that goes um i think we're we're, we're not just going to see parity i think without going over the doom and gloom of what's happening you know economies the whole globe is shut down and has been static uh more or less give or take i know there's some key work key, key businesses that are running but you know this this data that we're going to see uh come out in the next few months from this period this quarter that we've just had yeah you know all through this when i was reading about deflationary scenarios from bears i was you know i was always thinking about you know what would be the financial event to bring it on and you know you could go to debt and you know just uh, the fact uh, huge there's not going to be enough demand for paper uh, to be able to roll it over without rates going up, not because the economy is strong, but just because of supply. But, you know, uh, this uh, shutting down the world, which has never happened in our lifetime, no. um, is so deflationary. And, you know, what central banks and governments, like, you know, the story of your, your, your mentee getting 80% of his income, uh, all of these are just such emergency drastic measures that I think the deflation wave is going to be bigger than most people thought it would be because of the lag time. And I have a hard time believing that governments are going to be able to smoothly run a program like this or be able to continue it long enough for, people, uh, for the economy to heal. Uh, to me, this is a car wreck, a deflationary car wreck. What do you think? I completely, I'm completely on the same page. I think it's going to be a, you know, the end game of this. You just, it, well, one thing's for certain that things aren't going to be the same after, you know, a recovery. I mean, there's going to be a recovery of sorts. There has to be, you know, yeah. there has to be, but um the deflationary story you're talking about, the wave, the, the economic fallout is, it just goes full circle back to the, the positioning of where I want to be in these currency pairs. So, I mean, it's interesting. A lot of people had this scenario on this wave they were looking for. And really, I mean, uh, you know, uh, most people, uh, including myself, were looking for financial reasons for it to happen. And there are financial reasons why it's happening. Don't you think it's... Uh, no matter what they do with paying people salaries and no matter what they do with being able to goose up prices of equities that we have a, a massive credit crisis brewing here and uh, try and repair credit markets, which uh, I interviewed a guy the other day. He had a great expression. He goes, we don't have capitalism. We have creditism. So if that trigger mechanism is gone, um, you know, uh, uh, how do you repair it? Isn't it just going to take a long time? Like a de the lost decade is possible. Look, I think you've hit on a very important point. Um, economies, despite the industrialization and, and the manufacturing and the, and, the, and the actual output side of things, but consumer centric economies such as the U S and the UK and EU, the human behavior is what drives economies. And that is what you've just said. The credit situation, it, you know, without people employed, without jobs, with unemployment is going to keep increasing. And, and, and with this 
wave of data that's going to come out. You know, it just said this morning on the news that there's 800,000. I know this in numbers terms relative to our population, this is a lot. I know in the US it's not. But in the UK, there is 800,000 businesses that are just a couple of weeks away from going bust. Yeah, so, you're, does the UK have a plan to make grants or uh, forgive loans? Well, they put a plan in place. They 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 come they come out with a very astute offer, which, as far as a government, you know, UK government's concerned, it seemed on the on the broad basis, it seemed quite fair. But there was some grey areas and some areas of concern. So there was um, interest-free loans. There was um, universal credit, which is essentially a, a benefit that people yeah. can just sign on and, and receive. Um, there was VAT, VAT deferrals. So all it was and all it is, 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 is papering over the cracks and delaying the inevitable, which is what you've just discussed. You, you've got this situation in the UK and I'm sure it's, 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 very real in the US as well and the EU and obviously globally where you've got as I say consumer centric economies that, that drive the economy that are, they're going to have no money to consume and then there's going to be no demand and then th and, and that's where I see the euro dollar Australian dollar US dollar and sterling US dollar that's where this 1984 or 1985 all the way through to, to, to today's trend line this is where we're going to see i think a, a a huge shift despite what central banks and intervention is going to come into play it is okay. the human behavior behind the, you know i know we're talking uh, quite macro in rather yeah. than technical. well you know i want to go to one more macro topic that was on everyone's mind for years and finally happened was brexit do you think well, the uk do you think the you and you know everyone was worried about that? It turned out to be pretty much you know nothing in comparison to this. You think the UK is better off uh, having gone through and accepted Brexit uh, in the face of this crisis? That they're uh, more on their own and don't have as much interdependence with the uh, the EU, or would they have been better off staying in the EU? Well, there's no better chart to demonstrate. What? And then the pound chart. There we go. So, yeah, that I mean, that okay. Let's go on the daily. We might see a little bit more of a. Uh, yeah, I mean, there we go. This is what people think of the pound um, from. So this is the you know this is the end of February, beginning of March, where the COVID coronavirus was uh, kind of made national news and you can see what's happened uh, to the euro versus sterling um, yeah. everybody is selling sterling buying yeah. euros admittedly it's uh, i think i measured it it went up to sort of 4.5 standard deviations away from the mean right. um, and i believe that this is just a pullback and we are I think we're heading to parity on, on Euro sterling as well. So I going to, back you. to your question, Brexit, um, I, I, I voted to remain part of the EU because I knew that economically it made sense. Constitutionally, I might not have agreed, but economically it made sense. And now we're on our own and we, we are, we're in a really bad position and now we've got this to deal. So, we, so to put it in a sequential process, the, the UK government, put this referendum out in 2016 and then they have been looking the other way, i.e. looking at Brexit for the last, you know, few years. Three, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. now this has come along and they're going to be looking the other way. Then they've got to come back. So, so, so really their eye hasn't been, as I say in the UK, their eye hasn't been on the ball. They've not yeah. been doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is, you know, essentially focusing on generating revenue out of you know and creating an economy that is sustainable so to see that 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 again it just reinforces my conviction that sterling dollar um is 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 going uh euro oh, dollar give me a dollar. give me a number 80 cents uh let's have a look okay so i mean it's an, it's an ugly chart i mean it's just been trending down anyway but yeah. we're uh yeah, I'd 
say I'd say sub parity. Okay. Everything heading I towards mean, parity, yeah, or under. Yeah. Yeah, or I would say possibly under. Um I mean it's you can see the way it's dancing yeah. along. Uh, one twenty okay. at the minute. It's uh, uh, it has done. Yeah. Sorry, um, all kinds of measured it? moves would take it to you know. Yeah, it's just twenty looking. cents if you go up to two bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> diversify your currency over there, buddy. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, anything else on uh, your radar you want to talk about? Otherwise, you could perhaps show your website and the services you offer, Richard. Um, all I would say is um, to be extremely careful out there. If you're, if you're a newer trader, I've been trading the markets for over a decade. Um, all I would share is to keep your wrist tight, um, stay on the sidelines if you don't know what you're doing because this, this volatility and um, the, 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 the way that news travels and the way the swings in the equity and the indices um, is, is just insane. It's, it's insanity. It's... Um, the way that the sensational, it's you the know way it's what? Sensational. You know, I'd like to wrap it up with. We were looking at bonds, you know, U.S. and uh, the bonds have a weaker structure than the ten-year notes do in the U.S. Uh, what the gilts look like? Um, well, the I mean, you have a view on uh, on on rates. Are they heading up in the U.K. like uh, the bonds are heading up? Uh, well, yields are yeah. I think yields are going to zero. You know, I think it's oh zero. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Same as the US. I think I think I think that I think the ten years going to zero. I think okay. You know, yeah, that's my that's my view. So okay. Uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure to talk to you again. All right, Richard. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you know, I uh, uh, I hope you have immunity now from you know maybe you did have it. Uh, you know. Yeah, I'm just uh, practicing the social distancing, and hopefully, I can remain healthy until this is all over. And well, I, this I is my the best as well. This is my hope for you and your loved ones, and everyone listening to this interview that uh, you and your loved ones remain untouched. Like and I, I got you. And with that being said, I want to thank everyone for hanging with us today. Remember, don't just count your pips; count your blessings. And we'll see everyone tomorrow. Good hunting. Thanks again, Richard. Thank Take you, care, buddy. My Bye. trading warrior brother, Richard Seeley. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome, guys. Adios.